Hi, Foundations 20. This is just a, a relatively quick run through about solving triangles. A uh, couple of things that I want to talk about are organizing your work, how you can go about uh, showing me what you've done in a way that I can follow your thinking, and it keeps the marking easy and gets you those little marks that are sometimes uh, lifesavers in terms of getting through this section. What I've thrown together here are three questions similar to what you're going to see in the hand-in assignment, not necessarily um, identical, but the same idea. So the process that I'm going to do here is, is what you're going to be doing on that hand-in assignment. The instructions say solve the following triangle or triangles. There's your big hint right there that there, some of these questions are likely going to involve more than one triangle in your answer. Watch for the ambiguous case. There's the other hint that, oh crap, I need to make sure that I check every time how many triangles are there. If you need more room, please attach another page. Hint, hint, some of these questions have a lot of work. Be neat, plan before you write, follow the same process, and you'll do well on this. Question number one, we're talking about triangle XYZ with angle Y is 40, Y is 5, X is 7. Notice we've got an angle two sides. This angle is not the included angle, it's not in between these two sides. This it would be a side-side angle situation. We've got two sides and then an angle. No, don't write that the other way around or I'll yell at you. This is again another hint that this is an amb ambiguous case that there may be more than one triangle. Always set them up this way and you won't go wrong. Start with the angle that you know. Angle Y is 40. So I draw some angle down here, I call it Y, and I label it 40 degrees. The side across from it is 5, so I go ahead and I just draw a triangle. Is this accurate? Is it to scale? Did I measure anything? Absolutely not. This is just my thinking. Let me organize my brain. The other side you know I always draw over here. Since this is side X, I know this is angle X. Since it's triangle XYZ, I know this is angle Z. Now what am I actually supposed to do in this question? It says, solve the following triangle. That means find everything that we don't know, which means for full marks on this question, I need to figure out what angle X equals, what angle Z equals, and what side Z equals. There's the three things that I need to find to get full marks on this question, provided there's only one triangle. Oh, right, I need to figure that out. I'm going to switch colors for a second. When you go to figure out how many triangles there are, your first task is to find out how far this is. The purpose is to figure out whether this is long enough to actually reach from Z all the way to the base of this triangle. Now the way I've drawn it, I'm implying that it works, but there's no guarantee. I actually have to do the math. In this little triangle on the left, it's a right triangle. I know that sine of this 40 degree angle equals H over 7, which means H is really 7 times sine of 40. Now why am I doing this? I'm trying to find out how many triangles are actually possible. Little things that I know because I've done lots of practice questions, since 5 is less than 7, I'm looking at one of two things. Either there are no triangles possible, meaning 5 doesn't reach all the way down here, or there are two possible with the 5 out here or the 5 in here. We'll have to see. When I punch this in and figure out what H is in my calculator, I get 4 point, oops, that's a 4, honest, 0.49 centimeters. Now, is 5 bigger than that? 5 is bigger or 0.49. Is 5 smaller than 7? Yes, 5 is smaller than 7. These two facts go together and tell me that there are two triangles, which means I'm going to have a triangle number one that I can find these things for, and I'm going to have a triangle number two that I need to find angle X, angle Z, and little side Z. I'm going to have these six values. Now look at what I've done here. I've organized my thinking in terms of how many triangles there are. I've put a place for whoever's marking this to see my final answers and know whether they need to bother looking at the page where I'm going to do all the work. Because there is no room left here to neatly do the work for two triangles. 
So you're going to grab a new piece of paper, and I'm going to write a little bit bigger here just because I can. Triangle number one. Now remember, we're dealing with a triangle that, in terms of our thinking, looked like this. This was 40, this was 5, this was 7. The height doesn't matter now. We know we can make a triangle. We're going to start by looking at this and going, I know two sides, one angle. This angle isn't in between the two sides, so I'm not going to use law of cosines. I'm going to use law of sines. And I know that if I set this up, I can go 5 over sine 40 equals 7 over sine x. Now, how are you going to solve this? I have a fraction equaling a fraction. Cross multiply. Whoops, come back here, pen. 5 sine x. Notice that 5 is going in front of the sine. If I put it afterwards, sometimes we're going to screw it up and write 5x, and that makes things really messy and changes values. Same thing here. 7 times sine of 40. Put the 7 in front. Otherwise, it ends up sine of 280, and that's not good. Okay? 7 times the sine of 40. We're trying to find x. I need to get rid of the 5. Divide both sides by 5. Sine of x equals. Now, when you go to punch this in your calculator, punch it in all at once. Go 7 times the sine of 40 and divide by 5, and it's going to spit out some decimal number that looks something like 0.8999. And you're going to be tempted to write down on your page sine of x equals 0.9. Does it equal 0.9? No, it doesn't. It equals 0.8999 and a whole bunch of other numbers that go on and on forever. Leave this in your calculator. Let your calculator remember all of the digits and keep it really, really accurate. How do you find x? We undo sine. Calculators are going to vary how you do this, whether you hit second function or inverse to undo sine. And your calculator is going to tell you that to the nearest degree, x is 64 degrees. Yay. Now go back to that other page. We know this is 64. Yay. We have one out of six values done. Back to our work. What's the next easiest thing to find? Side or angle Z. To find Z, we know all three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if I subtract the 40 we were given for angles for angle Y, pardon me, and the 64 for angle X, I find out that angle Z is 76 degrees. Back to where I was being nice and neat and organized, and I know that Z is 76 degrees. Now when my teacher marks, boom, boom, she sees those, easy to do. She doesn't have to hunt in this mess. Don't scribble answers, tiny little in a diagram, and hope that I'm going to find them there. Present your material saying, here it is, make it easy for me. You'll do better in the long run. What's left? What don't we know? Oh crap, I forget what I'm doing. I look over here. Oh yeah, I need side Z. Side Z, down here. Well, you know what? <coughs> I have this 5 over sine 40, which is great because those two values were given in the question. I know they're right. I need to find side Z, and I know angle Z is 76 degrees. I solve my law of sines by going 7 or 7. How about Z sine 40 equals 5 sine 76. How do I get Z by itself? I divide by sine 40. So what this turns into is 5 sine 76 divided by sine 40. Punch all that into your calculator. And Z ends up 7.547, something or other. That's what's in your calculator. If the directions don't tell you otherwise, you do get to round off any way you want. But um, likely it would be smart to say, well, that would make Z something like 7.5. I go, okay, I knew those were degrees. Do I know the units on this? And I check over here, no, I don't. <coughs> that leaves me the option of either writing the word units there, or I can just leave it blank. Triangle 1 done. Back to my work page. I'm going to draw a line and say, whoa, there, I'm done with that one. Triangle number 2. Now notice, when we're solving two triangles, what happens here with this angle X? In, in um, triangle number 1, angle X 
was an acute angle. In triangle number two, angle X will be obtuse. Let's see how that works. Angle X here was 64 degrees. Your first step in triangle number two, realizing that what's happening here is we've still got Y is 40, this is 7, and we have this side that's 5, but now it's swinging in here. And that 40 is terrible in there. I don't know if I can get it out of there. No, I can't. But you see what's happening? The 40 is here. We need to figure out what X is. If I take what X was in the first triangle, I go 180, take away that value from the first triangle, lose that 64, and I find out that X this time is 116 degrees. Back to where I'm being organized. X is 116. Now, as you do a lot of these, you're going to see a pattern. You know the 64, subtract it from 180, you can fill in that X. What else do we know? Well, we know that Z for this triangle is 180 minus the 40 that we were given for angle Y minus the 115 for X. And we know that Z has to be, let's get this right the first time, 24 degrees. Back to where I'm being organized. 24 degrees. It also reminds me, oh yeah, I need to make sure I find side Z or I'm not done. How am I going to find side Z? Exactly the same setup as we did in triangle number one. 5 over sine 40 equals Z over, now this time, angle Z is 24. And I solve Z sine 40 equals 5 sine 24. I find 5 sine 24. I divide by sine 40, and I find out that Z is 3.2. I hop back to where I was being organized. There's my answers. If I want to be really, really nice and neat for my teacher, I might do something like this to make sure that uh, they know this is where I look. They mark all these. They look all wonderful. They pop over here and check your work to make sure that um, you actually showed your work because this is important. This is showing me your logic, showing me that you actually get what's going on and didn't just find somebody's answer somewhere. That's a perfect answer for that question. I'm going to wrap up this video here. These are going to get really long. I will uh, have a video B and a video C to show you the next two.